Good. Are we on? We're on. But I look, I look terrible. Is this the best? Is this the best we can do? Ugh. Ugh. Does that help at all? Not to make the shit worse. I think. Hold on. Oh my god. You're off for two weeks. What about this light? I got all these lights up my. Oh, that's nice. Well, I don't know if it's nice. It's better. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. It is Sunday. Obviously, I am RJ City. I will be making coffee in my underwear for you, with you, because of you. Because of you, my life is now worthwhile. And I can smile because of you. The late Tony Bennett, who I just remembered is now dead, went through a weird period where he sort of had an afro. It was a toupee. It was a whole weird thing. It was jet black. He had a tan. You got to look it up. Like late 80s Tony Bennett, before he went full gray, he had weird shit going on. And you wonder why I'm just letting this go. I also realized my hair, I it's like I rarely put things into the universe, the secret, the vibrations, all that shit. You know, they go, you get what you think about. My hair is rapidly turning into maud. T- t- turning into late 70s B. Arthur. That's where we're heading. And now this makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, if all the, once this goes, it's there, like all of it goes gray. Here we are. And if, I can't say I'm upset about it. I will also say, if you have not already, make it an appointment. Fucking pause this and come back. Watch the latest Hey EW with Rob Van Dam. I cannot believe I sat and talked with Rob Van Dam. But then watching it, I go, that's exactly what I expected. There's the history of marijuana. There is tips for non-monogamous sexual activity. There's shots taken at Shane McMahon. And Van Johnson is mentioned. I was very excited about it. I don't know how he felt about it. I'm sure he'll talk about it on his podcast at some point. Uh, Go watch it. Go like it. Go share it. Go comment. Go tell people that you like it. I'll be posting more about it throughout the day. The link is everywhere. Go click and do the support this fine show. It's only made possible via viewers like you. It is our first time back in two weeks. It was Wembley. Wembley feels like a year ago. And then uh, all out. We went all in and then we're now all out. And now we're just out. We're out of all out. We have no more all outs to give. And it feels like I've been off for like a year it's so strange. Let us look at the underwear first, obviously, you idiot. they got little oranges on them. They're green, and they have a little of orange, and then there's a little wedges. But these wedges kind of look like clementines. I don't know who drew this, but I'd really, really like to speak to them. And if you... Do I have it here? I should. If you would like some coffee... And been, ah! I know you do. I would beseech you to go to rootlesscoffee.com. You can buy my coffee, brand new hip bag, or you could buy Dan Housen's coffee, uh, which is worse because he gets the money, I get shit, and a story of my life. Let us read some comments though, shall we? Red Dog says, morning RJ City, brother, put down that coffee, get yourself a glass and some eggs, no carbs, no fat, nothing but pure protein, bruh. I have the Hulk, sir. I like to talk about him before 10 a.m. Red said there was a hilarious episode of Hey E.W. Rob Van Dam, it was uh, one of a kind. He is, I was a big RVD fan. I don't know if that showed. I don't know if he realizes it, but, uh, well, it's too late now. Red Dog said, that's a cool-looking Vincent Price mug, a lovely gift uh, from SM who sent it. And there's a raven on the side of his head, and it's official. It's Creepsville's Vincent Price. Yep, 2021, Vincent Price, all right, reserved. There's his face. This is him. It's a nice time for a coffee. Mm. I remember when I was a kid, my mom used to watch his mystery show on P. I think it was just called Mystery on PBS. And then it was parodied on Sesame Street, one of my favorite Sesame Street sketches, Mysterious Theater by Vincent Twice. Vincent Twice. Amanda said, yes, I miss live so much. Good morning. Henderson said, good morning. All first time here. Hello, Henderson. Okay, that mug is hilarious. Just only occurred to me that it's Mr. Price's head. My brain said it would have his name on it or something. Well, it does on the bottom, you see. Um, Mike said, good morning, all from the Norwegian Escape Cruise Line. 
I just finished a week-long cruise with a crap ton of boomers. And if you want a crap ton of fun on a cruise, like January, I'm going to be on the Jericho cruise. Doing what? I don't really know. Come figure it out with me. At the worst, you're on a cruise. You know, even if I suck, the cruise will be good. That's the important thing. I had a lovely time at StarCast. I thought I wasn't going to have a line. I had a line for the full two hours I was there. I was like, thank God. And now I never want to do one of them again. Because I had such a wonderful time. Why ruin it? Red Dog said, I'd rather take a cruise with boomers than immature TikTok Zoomers. Uh, look, stop, stop defending by age. Everyone sucks and everyone is stupid. Um, Mia said, good morning, beautiful people. Sean said, good morning. Mikey, Josh, Carly, Prisma, Nails, Henderson, Christine. Ryan said, hey, W, good morning. Gene said, hey, W, and everybody. Kendi said, so glad to have you back. Saeed said, happy Sunday to all. It's been too long. EJO said, good morning. What's your favorite snack for the munchies since we're talking weed? Smoking with joints, lighting up joints. When I was in high school, I may have partaken in such a drug. And we used to go to a place, Christine may know it since she, she lives in the area, called Steer In Burger. I was on Young Street. It looks like total shit. It looks like the biggest dive, but they were open late. So they would you would always run into people that you knew because they were like the only place late. That was a, a, an open. It was like that or the drive through But you want to go sit down. It's two Greek brothers, you know, cheeseburger, cheeseburger, that kind of vibe. And they had the best onion rings. And we used to get the onion rings. And my friend would crack the onion rings open and fill the inside with ketchup and then eat it. And if that's not a fucking snack for the munchies, I don't know what is. Kevin said, good Sunday, RJ. Fun stoner moments. With RVD. Yes, yes, there were. I, and I feel like I'm on the opposite. This is like, we were, we were the before and after. I was clearly the before. Do you understand what I'm saying? I was too high strung. Vanessa said hi. Amy said good morning. Poe Girl said good morning. Leo said, do you remember the collaboration Tony Bennett did with Drowning Pool in 2004? No, I don't. If you want to step up, you got to get knocked down. Henderson said, so you say you're going Golden Girls on us? Yes. No, Maud. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Sayid said, orgies and kaboom. The takeaway from the new Hey W. Squirrel said, good morning, everyone. Fantastic episode of Hey. Squirrel also did a wonderful cartoon of Daniel Garcia doing his dance. Squirrel starts getting into animation now. It's lovely. Zoelle said, good morning. No doubt the highest rated Hey W dropped today. Josh said, waking and baking. So Sierra said, good morning, RJ. So Sierra, I saw at Starcast. It was delightful. Yesterday, I took a special gummy, and I watched the first 20 episodes of Splatalot. God bless you. I've never laughed so hard at adolescents getting head trauma. Yeah, I hate to be like, you couldn't make that show today, but it was pretty dangerous. Um, Even while we were doing the show... Sometimes we would cross the line of just straight up being really, really mean. Uh, so, uh, thank you. And it, and people are like, oh, they still got that castle. No, they don't. Castle's been taken down. And we did a web series about that too, which is filled with jokes I wrote. I hosted it. Gildar hosted it with Jason Agnew. It's called Smash A Lot. It's all on YouTube. Leo said, I've noticed... It is always the same wrestlers who follow and like pics from apparently hot women wrestling fans. What what are you talking about? I don't know. What Call them out, Leo. Name names. Mikey said, speaking of RVD, someone I know just found out she's allergic to weed after years of smoking it for anxiety. You know how many people... She, Regal was a big proponent of everyone should take an allergy test. Because sometimes you eat shit and you don't even realize that you're, it's not like you're anaphylactic and it's not like your throat's going to close up, but it just makes you feel like shit and you don't realize it. And and it's very true. So like 50 year olds would be like, I'm allergic to oranges. And you're like, ah, you found out now. Henderson said, oh, Urka gave me my flowers. Thanks. Henderson said, hey, W is how I got my friend into wrestling. Mr. Said, I want to thank you for that. It makes me so happy that 
non-wrestling fans are watching the show and then learning about people. Go watch the Eddie Kingston episode and tell me you don't want to see him wrestle. Go watch the Taz episode. Go watch Rob Van Dam. By the way, this episode, the RVD episode, is our 69th episode. Next week will be episode 70. Dear Lord. Nails said, happy cultiversary to me. Can you give us Sebastian Maniscalco's top three tips for an orgy? There's, you ever see these people at the orgies that they don't know what they're doing? You gotta have sex with more than one person. You gotta have something in every hole at all times. Do you know what I'm saying? Tip number one, have a towel with you at all times because you're gonna have to wipe. Do you understand what I'm saying? Number two, have the biggest keys. They will get picked first. Number three, and this is the biggest tip of all, don't talk about it with your wife on the car ride home. And a scene. I hope that worked for you. Uh, Leo said, would you ever wear onion print underwear? I, is that available? Is that such a thing? Bree said, you should get seasonal underwear like Thanksgiving should be turkeys or apple pies or Halloween spooky stuff. Yeah, but then I can't. I have Christmas underwear. I got three pairs and they're sitting there for the rest of the year. I can't do it. Leo said, what about David's Bozo Cotton Candy Flavor Coffee? Uh, it's a wonderful coffee. You can get more Bozo stuff. He also started a new Instagram called Bozo's Farm. It's all farm animals and pigs and things of that nature. Gar said, is RJ holding an intervention for RVD or is Rob hosting a TED Talk? I'll let you decide. Rob said, we're going to talk about weed whether you like it or not. Here we go. Let, so this is my issue with this mug, even though fundamentally I love it. Uh, it's just a deep head. I don't know if I'll be able to get all the coffee out. I don't even... Yeah, this is a mug for show. This is not... Mmm. Delicious. Leo said, do you have Vincent Price's egg magic as a kid? I believe that was just a Simpsons joke. Josh said, really love seeing JCPenney's peewee bow tie during All In. I looked it up on eBay and saw an official Playhouse JCPenney shopping bag. Get one. So the deal on that is, and I had no idea about this, uh, peewee used to have peewee Herman pajamas at JCPenney. And the promotion was you buy them and you get like, it comes with this free bow tie. So all those bow ties are online now. So I, I picked one up and I thought it was nice. And I didn't think it was too much. I didn't want to be like, look at this thing. Uh, and it's what's crazy is that there's so many pay-per-views coming up. October 1st is Wrestle Dream. Then there's Full Gear. Renee and I have a lot of outfits we need to get. She's already advising me. Believe, believe you me. Um... Here we go. We have, we have somebody who tweeted a thing. No, they just quoted. What a pain in the ass this thing is. Squirrel said, RVD was my favorite for so long. And then what happened? Such a cool wrestler to watch. Mia said, Mia's been, been a member for 12 months. I knew I'd get that out. And she said, oh my God, I'm way far behind it. I had a horrible week and a panic and anxiety attack. And I worked and cried and customers could be so mean. So glad you were back to make me soft smile. It's all on me. I feel so burdened now. Uh, Henderson said, the cruise is happening again? Yes, it's the fifth year. It's five alive. John Brown said, hi, RJ. That Vincent Price item you have looks like a Toby mug. They're made for mint, but they're shaving soaps, razors, and brushes. Something the culture has forgotten. I haven't forgotten. And my, when I want a close shave, I put my utensils in a Vincent Price mug. Leo said, I wish AEW would do a taping from the Jericho Cruise. Me too. That was one of my favorite Dynamite episodes too. Maybe with Rampage and Collision and Ring of Honor, something will happen on the cruise. I'm sure it's logistically a nightmare, but still. SM said, I was a fan of RVD's cake when I was a teenager. I bet you were. Amanda said, it was super amazing to see you at StarCast. And you were lovely at all that also. Thank you, Amanda. I saw Amanda. I saw Sociera. I saw Val Pancakes. And I was like, haven't we met before? She said, no, this is it. Nail said, uh, Mia, don't, oh, well, that's not for me. Ryan said, what's your favorite Vincent Price movie? 
for me, is hard to beat Dr. Fives. I love me some Dr. Fives. I love the sequel, too. Also, a big fan, even though it's kind of bad and basically a worse version of Dr. Fives. I love Theater of Blood. Um, I can go on. Confessions of an Opium Eater is crazy, if you haven't seen it. Uh, Last Man on Earth is not bad, because he storms the apocalyptic world in a suit. And uh, great episode of The Muppet Show, too. Neil said, are you real-life friends with RVD? I met RVD that day, and I've never seen or spoken to him since. I'm, I have a feeling he will talk about this on his podcast. At least I hope he will. Corey said, hey, RJ, first time I've caught one of these live. Love you, and hey, EW, hope your morning is great. Thank you, Corey. That's so sweet of you. Dorothy said, good morning, RJ. Morning, everybody. Leo said, I only did weed once with an Italian girl I dated who is a total fucking stoner. That's, that's how you got to do it. I had a girlfriend who was a stoner before, but she did not share that shit, and that's why it didn't work out. Uh, SOST said, Sost said, when you come back to New York, bring your grandmother to the Air and Space Museum over in Garden City. I'll comp your admission. I'd love to give you guys a tour. Oh, my God. You will not believe this. We've absolutely been before. But now that I know it, now that I know you're there, do I just yell for your name? I want to go back now. I also want to go to, now I'm just... Mentioning the museums of Long Island, the Roosevelt House, which I was dragged to as a child, and the Children's Whaling Museum in Cold Spring Harbor. That's my favorite museum ever. David Arquette is here. Hello, friends. Love you all. It was just David's birthday, the big birthday boy, and we're all so proud of him and the stuff he's doing. He's 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 on the go. He's got these animals. He's got clown stuff going on. He's he's painting all the things going on. I do want to say, and I think I mentioned this before. He gave me uh, the official pair of shoes from Mrs. Davis on on Peacock, which I'm not promoting. I'm just stating that that's where the shoes are from. Uh, GRB said I rated up there with Conan's last Seth Rogen interview. Henderson said, hey, man, there's nothing wrong with being nervous. I would have broke down if I ever got a chance to interview RVD. Mad respect to all you do. David wrote hearts and applause and the clown face and the rainbow. He's doing well. Everyone's saying happy birthday to David. This is no longer about me. Christine said, I do know Steerin. I'm more of a Golden Star Burgers gal. Golden Star Burgers, my understanding is that my ex, ex, girlfriend from like a university her boyfriend who she was together with before me and then got back together with after and they got married and had a kid which is totally good because i was not in the mood and go enjoy yourself his family owned golden star but they can also go fuck themselves uh dorothy said happy belated birthday david dorothy said i'm about to run into choir rehearsal oh my god just wanted to tell you some good news. I got cast as Queen Agravain in Once Upon a Mattress and rehearsal start tonight. Wow. I'm not really familiar with that. Uh, but it's exciting nonetheless. You're exciting. That's what I'm familiar with. So enjoy it. Nell said, oh, happy birthday, Sylvia, too. My cat, we don't have a hard date, but it was around September-ish when we got them. So my dear, sweet Sylvia is 19. This is just and but also plays with the laser pen, jumps everywhere, wants the treats, like not a haggard eight, 19, like looks like a kitten 19. Um John said, I took an allergy test a few years ago and I was allergic to 69 of the 75 things. Been stuffing my face with allergy medications ever since. Like maybe that's the thing, is that like most of the things we have are just shitty. Gene said, you'll have to get RVD back for the 420th episode. Very fun. Uh, Lady Pam said, holy cow, far too long, but love it. David said, damn good impression. I do so few impressions nowadays. You know what else I'm going to fucking talk about? You know, remember, I guess, for like from the 70s and 80s, people would do Nixon, they would do Reagan, they would do Johnny Carson, they would do... 
like a maybe a George C. Scott. They would do a John Lane. Those were like Jack Nicholson was just huge. Like if there was all, if every impressionist did a Jack Nicholson, just like every impressionist also does like a Christopher Walken. I looked on TikTok and the new version of that is Jennifer Coolidge and Drew Barrymore. There is like this a subset of female impersonators. And like that's just, it's just in this wheelhouse. And they also do Kristen Wiig. Like I've seen 10 or 20 of these people who do female impersonations like sitting down at lunch with Kristen Wiig. And it will always be like Kristen Wiig, Drew Barrymore, Jennifer Coolidge. It's so weird that that's like the new, the new stock to me, you know? I mean, it's not weird. I'm just noticing it. Lewis said, Brian Patagonia Danielson, lest we forget about his episode. David said, I'm with the themed underwear. I'm fucking, of course you are. Leo said, what about Pelswick print underwear? Yeah, what about it? Christian said, thoughts on the Fraser episode where they go to the cabin and everyone wants to have sex with someone different. I loved it. I love those. They're sort of like bottle episodes. Is that the one with all the doors? It has a really good set, like a play, and they're going in and out of rooms. Is that one? I, I do like that one. I feel like maybe there's multiple of them. There's a lot of Frasier episodes where he just wants to have sex. Can't wait for the reboot where he doesn't get a blowjob. So Sierra said, who doesn't love deep head? God bless. Henderson said, it kind of looks like there's a tip at the top. There's a lip at the top while you drink it. Helpful for no spillage. But it does not. No, it's not easy to drink. And like to drink it, I got to put my whole face in the cup. My whole face is gone. After this episode, I think this couple will just be for show. Gare said, RJ with some deep head on YouTube. I don't know if those are PG. Well, we're here now. Um, I've lost my place. I'm so far behind and I've lost my place. We're going to get back. Ah, we're getting back on track. We're getting, there we go. There we go. Crispy said, where are your pants? Lauren said, hello, RJ and Chad. Did RVD invite you to an orgy? If so, what would you bring? My goal is to now run into RVD at an orgy and be like, oh, my God. I'll be like, shut the f- This is so good to see you. Remember we were talking about this, and now we're here, and ah, I remembered all the tips. That's my goal. Leo said, Renee's team moo orders are too much. Renee's a trip. Renee, said, Renee likes to advise on my outfits, too. She picked... The latest one that's coming up for Wrestle Dream. So if I look like shit, it's on her. By the way, what an interview by Tony Storm on Dynamite. Holy shit. And she said she was going to give everyone a sneak peek into her life next week. I wonder what that could mean. David said, Paul has this great section of that whole collection in his storage, which was dead stock. I hope they put his collectibles on tour i i don't know what does that mean though like who where would i possibly they're not coming to toronto they're not gonna say paul rubens shit are they gonna have bottles of orbits and that um velvet dirty harry painting and things are popping into my head i also remember and it's so he did feel like as close in real life, like as close as you would get to a real life Pee Wee Herman. Uh, he had all those fake breakfast foods, you know? It's just so, it's so stupid. So wonderfully stupid. Nail said, don't trust Renee with the outfits. Leo said, RVD was Amy Winehouse's celebrity crush. I did not know that. Speaking of Johnny Carson impressions. Bree said, David and RJ, you also dress up on Cameo when it's Halloween, Christmas, etc. with with like headbands and such. It'll give more to the videos. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Uh, I'm so far behind. GRB thought this was a Vince McMahon mug. No, it's not. Uh, I'm, you have no chance in hell, and you're also fired. Mmm, grapefruits. Mmm. Kenny said, are you doing the pot? I've not done the pot in weeks. Uh, Sean said, I appreciate the weed questions. I love, like, he was incapable of not giving real answers to that. David said, RBD is the nicest and loves anything related to the mob. 
as I found out at the Las Vegas screening of Mob Town and the Mob Museum. My uncle said they play Mob Town on what, whatever channel, like all the time. He always sees Mob Town. Nell said, Well, I'm surprised you come off as old friends. RVD totally seemed used to you. He's just a friendly guy. Josh said, Vincent Price and those Roger Corman Poe movies are so great. Love them as a kid, despite the fact that they have nothing to do with, with the actual stories. Mask of the Red Death is very good. Um, there's that one he does with Peter Lorre where they do the wine tasting and he makes a big, big to do out of gargling and sniffing the wine. It's great. Uh, Kenny said, when will Shane McMahon be on Hey EW to defend himself from the attack of RVD? I'm so happy that we can talk about Shane, like we can mention Shane McMahon on this show and that we can even have RVD on the show. It's so crazy. I I want more strange out of the box people. I'm going to be okay with it. Leo said, have you ever made coffee in a thong? Not publicly, but yes, it's not fun. My ass has let me let me put it like this, Leo. My ass has not had enough things in it to the point where when I wear a thong, it'll go, oh, you know, you, you've got something in your ass. Like my ass is like constantly it's going, psst, psst, there's something in your ass right now. I just do you know do you know about this? That's what my my ass is doing the whole time I wear a thong. Molly said, City Guys is the number one theme song that's been stuck in my head, and I regularly sing it since the show went off the air. Also starring the male woman from Ghost Rider. Crispy said, RJ makes coffee and a mankini has a nice ring to it. I'm so, so glad that we're over this fucking stupid mankini shit. SM said, fuck Golden Star Burgers. That's how far behind we are. Bree said, RJ, you should be Bozo's little helper. Yup. Anthony said, you're awesome, and I love you. Lawrence just had Sylvia emoji, so thank you. Val said, it was so wonderful to finally meet you last week, and thank you for being so kind. Leo said, it's lost the most boring, drawn-out show ever. Lost, I bit hard on toward, like, the last three seasons, and I got caught up first on everything. I was like, this is going to be great. And I've never watched another show since. David said, there's a wonderful deleted scenes from Pee-wee's Big Adventure video on YouTube that explains the story behind the amazing Larry and the flying toupee. I've never seen this before, and I need to go watch it. I was also watching from Big Top Pee Wee, which is like, you know, everyone did not like it when it came out. But the opening, he's, he's you know, he sings like a lounge singer, and then he comes out disguised as Abraham Lincoln, and it's like, why didn't we like, why were we so stupid to not like this movie is my question. Uh, Sacred Realm said, has anyone made a Vincent Price excellent joke yet? No. This radar egg will explode. Gene said, RJ can be the cookie or wizard to David's bozo. If that's not too WGN era specific. I don't know. I don't know if WGN would like that. David said, people? You mean like Rich Little? He was the main guy. No. So many people did a fucking Nixon. So many people did a Reagan. He was just, Rich Little was never the best. Always the first. I'll tell you, there's a great Reagan. Ring of Honor, ring announcer, Bobby Cruz. He, he, out of nowhere to us, he said, I do a great Ronald Reagan. And I said, oh, really? It was me. It was Dalton. I think Mike Bennett was there. And he went, I swear to God, he took like 15 seconds to get ready. And then he just went, well, Nancy. And I said, Jesus, it's a good thing you said Nancy. Or else I wouldn't have known who the fuck you were talking about. That's my other favorite thing. Impressionists, they will say the name of the, imper- of the person that they're impersonating. Hello, this is President Ronald Reagan. You know how Ronald Reagan would say that? He would say, hello, I'm President Ronald Reagan. Um, Kenny said Dan Housen and RJ dressed as Egghead would be a great tag team. All right, okay. Gene said Egghead was the most exquisite Batman villain. Leo said anybody who said sarcasm, I've lost my place. Uh, okay, let me. I got to speed run through these because we have requ- requests to get to. I can't even speak. Leo said anybody who said sarcasm is the lowest form of wit wasn't around to see people doing Gordon Ramsay impressions on TikTok. David said, Jennifer, Jennifer Coolidge is the new Christopher Walken. Agreed. 
Leo said Frazier banged every middle-aged 90s actress. What about Terry Te- Terry Hatcher? I'd like to get her in an episode. She'd be good. James said, Minoru Suzuki mentioning Tony Shalhoub was epic. Yes, it was. Joe Queer said, are you a fan of Schitt's Creek? No, because I auditioned for it to play Chris Elliott's son. And then when I didn't get it, I was so crushed that I have not watched a single second of the show. Uh, David said, it's good to have goals. Leo said, is there any look less flattering to men than slacks or suit pants with no shirt? What What do you, what? Who is wearing this that you're staring at? Plasma said, I've been saying it's criminal that Tony is doing an unhinged old Hollywood starlet and we haven't got to see her act with RJ City. Uh, Leo said, my brother had a teacher whose birthday was 9-11 and he was in her class on the day she was suitably... Horrible and still made them sing happy birthday. Life goes on. David said he was a real life Pee Wee Herman. That's the craziest part. He really, really was. If if Pee Wee Herman could be real, it would be him. Like, I don't know how to explain that. Like, oh, you do have the crazy shit all over your house. Oh, you do just do weird fuck around things all day. Like, whatever. We watched Stairway to Stardom one day. All day. Poe Girl said, why am I so excited for Halloween this year? I don't know. That's not my fucking problem. Saeed said, please sing the theme to Greatest American Hero. I haven't done this in so long. Look at what's happening to me. I can't believe it myself. Suddenly I'm up on top of the world. Should have been somebody else. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. I never thought I could feel so free. Flying away on a wing and a prayer. Who could it be? Believe it or not, it's just me. Wow, I'm so happy that I remembered all the lyrics to that. Mia has a 60-second scene request. Trying to help a customer on the phone, but they are so rude. They won't listen. You go off on them being rude. Hello, this is Bowerings. How may I help you? Oh, well, we have many glass bowls. Yeah, I mean, we have a... I'm sorry? (laughs) Sorry, yeah, this is is Bowerings. I'm just, just trying to help. Okay, yeah, no, no, we have... We do have plenty of glass balls, all colors, all shapes, all sizes. Yeah. Big enough to fit a what? Well, I, I you know, I, I don't think that's any of your business what I put in my balls. What about, wait, this is for you. I'm not going to buy. You know, that's not. I am the manager. Okay. I, I am the manager of this Bowerings, and all the balls go through me. You want a glass ball? It's because I I, I have uh, curated it. I'm the curator here at Bowerings, okay? How do you like that? I don't like your tone either. You got any glass balls in your house? You probably don't because your attitude has shattered them. Good day. Yeah, yeah I was going to hang up. Good. That was an old phone she was on too, the curator of Bowerings. Amanda said, I love it so much. I told the hubs, maybe RJ will show up with her. I don't know what you're talking about. Leo said, is the XFL going to be successful? It already is as far as I'm concerned. Poker said, I love Vincent Price, and I got to see him speak at my college in the olden days around 1970. Oh, my God. Poker, what the fuck did he talk about? Um, Leo said, weirdest revival, XPW or XFL? I want the X Games back, baby. Sean said, I think something in your ass was a Nickelback song. Uh, Mia said, thongs aren't it anymore. I had no idea. Rob said, is he still taking orgy tips? That's a great question. Josh said, Ghost Rider, the Max Mouse episode. I'm so far behind. I'm so far behind. I'm trying my best. Ah, there we go. The Max Mouse episode with Julia Stiles explaining hackers is pretty great. Good. Uh, I'll tell you what the problem is. I'm so far behind because it takes so long to drink out of this thing. Leo said, I loved it when you did the sex ed teacher who did the outdated impressions, including Reagan. 
that was a long time ago. I don't talk about my, my political era anymore. Pearl Girl said Reagan did have a cool speaking board. That's why everybody loved him. Henderson said, oh, you would have been amazing on Schitt's Creek, RJ. You would have blown it out of the water. That's precisely why I wasn't Kath. Nail said, RJ and I finally, uh, Rob and I finally watched Jerry's Nutty Professor the other day. The brief werewolf part was confusing, but it was fantastic. One of the truly all-time scariest moments in a straight-up comedy. That's like... And it was based on the old Jekyll and Hyde transformations, of which there's an amazing supercut on YouTube that I watched really late one night and I was too scared. What I love about The Nutty Professor, beyond, you know, the whole thing, the colors of the movie are so beautiful and bright and, like, that's a movie where it's like, oh, you got to get it on Blu-ray or whatever. You got to watch it on the best TV, whatever shit that is. You can watch it in the movie theater. Watch it in the movie theater. I will tell you something else. Kathleen Freeman, who played the Dean's assistant, also played David's, uh, not, it was also in Ready to Rumble. She played Jimmy the King's mother, along with David's father, Louis Arquette. I tied that all up. One of my favorite scenes, and I can sing songs from that movie all day. We've got a world that swings and that old black magic and all that shit. The the Dean, Mr. Warfield, the scene with Buddy Love and him when they're doing Hamlet is so to be or not to be. It's so good. It is so good. It's so weird that, I don't know, it's, it's like more than a comedy. Does that make any sense? Because they're so scary, and then they show, it's just a deep, it looks beautiful. I can't say good things about it. Christine gifted five memberships. Cinnamon Girl, Amy, Midnight Cowboy, Easy, Queen of the Ring, who probably has no idea. Uh, congrats. <clears throat> I was gifted some Sinatra records. Could you do my way as Vincent Price? Oh, my God. This time, I'm going to let it all come out. This time I'm going to stand up and shout. I'm going to do things my way. It's my way, my way or the highway. Someday you'll see things my way. I guess you'll never know if you'll let it show. Someday you'll see things my way. I guess you'll never know if you want to go. This time I'll let it all come out. This time I'll stand up and shout. I want to do things my way. It's my way. My way or the highway. Check out, check out, check out my melodies. And scene. That was My Way by Vincent Price. I hope that worked for you, Mikey. Star said, hi, RJ. I hope it's a good day for you and everyone, I guess. Leo said, I didn't get to make out with Sarah Levy or Ann Murphy. Oh, I would be sad about that too. In fact, I'm sad about that right now. I just wanted to meet Chris Elliott. I don't give a shit about him. Please. Please. Um, Nail said, I recently heard a story that people get killed over singing My Way Badly on karaoke in the Philippines. You know, um, I can believe it. Unless we forget, as he loves to tell everyone, Paul Anka wrote it. Sinatra had nothing to do with it. Um... AKA Baldy's been a member for 15 months and just wrote Mauve Beret. Does anything else need to be said? I don't think so. Somebody wrote a thing here. Let me see what they said. Did anyone say? Ah. Um, oh, yeah. Marcus Wade said, ah, believe it or not, George isn't at home. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, late. Uh, Leo said, I was once a customer service rep for a bakery. I, wait, I need to scroll back and read this story. And all the customers were chefs and extremely horrible. Chefs are mean. Christine said, oh, my God, a Bowerings mention? Going deep. Leo said, who is your Schick's Creek audition in front of? Oh, I didn't make it past the first round. These were people who were like were just casting agents, not remotely connected with the show. It wasn't like Eugene Levy was like, well, I think this guy's shit. Mia said, my new catchphrase, that's brisk, baby. Why didn't I say that on Zero Hour? Sean said, I just watched a Schwarzenegger movie that takes place in the near future with the XFL 1. I would love, I remember Mutant Football, the video game. Uh, Val said, 
I love an RJ. I'm so far behind. Well, there you go. As I said, this mug is derailing the show. Faith, just stop by. It's something fabulous. Thank you. Leo said, who is the hottest member of the chat? I'll let you guys decide. Weren't you dating a woman? Weren't you dating a woman? Michelle Million in this chat? Weren't you dating her? Um, Leo said, do you know the day the clown cried? Do I? I know someone who's actually seen it. And I said, is it as bad as everyone says? And she said, yep. And I think it's like less than a year from now it's going to come out. It's going to be released to Congress, where the fuck it is, as a historical document of shit. Man, this is a good amount of facial hair this week. Why, why does everyone fucking do that? It's annoying. Tomorrow is Monday, so tomorrow I will shave. Uh, so whatever. Sorry. I'm going to be at Dynamite and Collision next week. It's going to be a time. It's going to be a time and a half. S- Cincinnati. The hometown of the Mox Man, who I'm sure will come on the show at some point. And, and then after that, we're going to State College PA, which I didn't realize was a real place. Um, Sean said, would you sing that old black magic as Jennifer Coolidge or just as yourself? It, whatever works. Yeah, I'm not going to do Jennifer Coolidge. I don't know how to do it. I don't want to fucking try it. I don't need that basic weapon in my arsenal. That old black magic has me in its spell. That old black magic that you weave so well. And then I get those fingers up and down my spine. That same old witchcraft when your eyes meet mine. That same old tingle that I feel inside. And then that elevator starts its ride. Down and down and down I go round and round and round I go. Like a leaf that's caught in a tie. I could stay away, but what can I do? I hear your name. And I'm all aflame, I'm aflame with such a burning desire that only your kiss can put out the fire. You are the lover I have waited for. Oh, you're the mate, the one, the thing, the fling that I was just created for. And every time your lips meet mine, down I go, round I go in a spin. Loving that spin I'm in under that old black magic called love in a spin loving that spin i'm in under that old black magic called love and then everyone's like oh my god he's turning into the nutty professor he's turning into our creepy old teacher that's the other fucked up thing that you know you don't realize watching the nutty professor Every that, that's a classic movie where the students are the same age as the teacher, and like everybody's 40. And they're like, I'm gonna just gonna bang this, I'm gonna go to great lengths to have sex with my student. It's totally fine. I will also say, uh, the weird, and I totally forgot about this the part where he's a baby is so weird, too. Yes, honey, dear. The wonderful Howard Morris plays his father. Andrew Zarian, oh my God, is here. Said, why didn't we ever see, this is a good question, uh, Vincent Price as Dracula. He was never a vampire. That is true, except for a small appearance when he was on The Muppet Show. He did a thing where he came back with fangs. Um, That's so, he was was rarely, you know, supernatural. He was more of the weird creepy you know how in wrestling there's like are we are we just creepy or are we you know supernatural are we from wicked are we from hocus pocus like you know what are we doing he was always oddly enough more on the reality side which is so weird house of wax is another good weird movie he was in um it's a great question why was he never a vampire my favorite is fall of the house of usher where he plays roderick usher because he suffers from an acuteness of the senses. Everything is too loud or too bright. The smells are too strong. It's just, that is my favorite character trait. You got to take your fucking shoes off when you come into his house. This is the best. Um, Andrew said, Paul Anka also wrote the Tonight Show theme when he was a teen. And like, can you imagine like, why would you ever have to work after that? You wrote My Way, you wrote the Tonight Show thing, and you still have to perform? There are two really, really good videos about Polanco. One is a documentary 
from the National Film Board of Canada. So it's totally free. I think it's on YouTube. From when he was like 16 or 18 and he was like this teen idol. And it's crazy to see like all this shit kind of go to his head. And he's sitting at a table with like all these guys that were his management. And they're like, just clearly mob the fuck up. That's incredible, number one. Number two, there was like a leaked recording years and years later, decades later, of him. I don't know if he's yelling at the crew about his band not having the right shirts. It's one of those leaked audios like Buddy Rich or Orson Welles or Art Garfunkel, who has another good leaked audio tape. And he's so fu- it's so fucking funny. Because he's so fucking angry and trying to be, like, badass. And it's like, buddy, you sing fucking put your head on my shoulder. Like, you know, maybe calm down, like, a little bit. Mia says, is there a cheat meal for today? I have two pizzas coming uh, at 1 o'clock, hopefully before. One is, uh, I got a, a little bruschetta. I got a little, like, a, a focaccia bruschetta thing. And then the other one, I think it's just a straight-up pizza. I can't remember now. I was lying in bed last night. <laughs> And I was going through so many uh, options. I can't even remember what the fuck I ordered, but it'll be good. And then maybe uh, ice cream after that. Leo said, did you get any delicious jellied eels in London? Our wonderful tribe. I'll tell you what I did eat. The hotel had wonderful breakfast. I had hard boiled eggs and a bowl of mushrooms and cucumbers every day. And then, you know, I I complained about it already. Taving dragged this at Abbey Road and it was fucking just a waste of time. And then after that, I found this uh, Italian Italian place called the Red Pepper. And um, I got everything on the menu. I was so fucking hungry. I got a little, I, I got a chicken cutlet. I got the calamari. We got a pizza. We got a charcuterie, which is an overused term, but it was really, really good. Um, Henderson said, the guy, and we'll be back next year. Will I be there? Who the fuck knows? Mikey said, Mutant Football was great. They made a weird cartoon for it. Oh, I have to look that up. Are you not thinking of Toxic Avengers? Which is also having a video game come out too, and I want to play that. SM said, historical document of shit. Uh, Amy said, there's a Vincent Price and wife book called A Treasury of Great Recipes. That's pretty incredible. A gorgeous book too. I will also say, a friend of mine, Kenneth, Kenneth Reed, Ken Reed um, actually got the Don Knotts how to build, how to work with cement book. He got the full book and I'm incredibly jealous of him. Pineapple Lover said, Mutant Football was good. Mutant League Hockey was legit. One of my favorites for the saga. I should really go through this again. Poe Girl said, I used to enjoy Vincent Price and his wife on cooking talk shows. Andrew Zarian has joined. Is this unethical? Thank you. This is so sweet of you. I, I appreciate it. This is just a delightful thing for you to do. And Nail said, welcome, Andrew. She'll show you around. She she has the keys to the place. Um, Leo said, did you hear that Izzy wrestled? Do you have an irritating young fan with a weird dad who looks up to you in an obsessive way and is surrounded by enablers? No. I have, uh, to older people, I had this guy, I talked about this. I had this guy who came up and he's like, this is, this autograph, and this picture is from my mom. She's like 83. Her name's Shirley. And, and it's her birthday. Guy left his his old mother on her birthday to get a picture with me. So I sent her a nice video too. Andrew said, I need to tell RJ about the time I was poisoned by an old Persian mystic on the Long Island Railroad. Andrew, I, first of all, uh, the next stop is Huntington. When I was a kid, I thought the guy who took the tickets, I thought his name was Lur. And I remember turning to my grandmother, you're not going to believe this. This guy, what kind of fucking name is Lur? Like, in what world would that be a good name? Do they still wear the hats? The last time I was on that railroad, I can't remember, but maybe I will again when we do Arthur Ashe in a couple weeks. I'm going to try to see Mario, too. Shit's happening. Um... There was another, oh, I had a really, uh, whatever, I don't, I'm not saying her name. I had a bad date once. She was a nice girl. We had fun. My grandmother thinks she was too fast for me. 
Uh, she was from Massapequa, a family-owned diner. And for some reason, my uncle ended up getting tickets to a taping of America's Got Talent. He just lucked into them. And I was like, let's go. And it was horrendous. It was a fucking, it was like a fair five-hour marathon. They took your phone. And she got really drunk on the way home. And I just remember that taking that lure home and being like, this, this is not happening. Amy said, anyone else attending Dynamite this week? I am. Henderson said, wasn't Vincent Price a vampire on that show? Oh, you're thinking of Hilarious House of Frightenstein. No, he was not. He was simply just the narrator. There was a vampire on that show. That was, it was the count. Uh, Rob said, probably because Christopher Lee had all the Dracula roles locked up. There was a lot of jockeying for position to play Dracula. It was a whole thing. You got to look into it. Bela Lugosi was like the one guy who couldn't escape it. I saw a movie called The Black Cat. Bela Lugosi plays a janitor with a beard and a hat. And you cannot hide his accent or beautiful eyes. That poor guy was fucked in the best of ways. Andrew said, Paul Anka has a great story about Sinatra losing his mind in a casino and jumping up and down on the table in his underwear. I would love to hear that. Lest we forget, Sinatra was nearly jailed for beating the shit out of a guy in a diner, allegedly. Um, I think he beat him up with a phone or something crazy. And then he ran, he was like on the lam and because the, the police wanted to talk to him and he wouldn't. And I remember, maybe it's a Dick Cavett episode, Sammy Davis Jr. is on. And he's like, Dick Cavett's like, have you heard from Frank at all? And he's like, nah, he's, you know, Frank's doing his thing, man, which means hiding from the police. Uh, Sam Fine says, I can't remember. I'm sure you can. Mia said, Matt Taven complained about me too. Well, he can also go fuck himself. Uh, Christine said, in honor of your Hey Milestone, nice. Oh, $69 for the 69th episode of Hey W. How the fuck have there been 69 episodes of Hey? I cannot fathom it. And it's going to make a nice DVD box set one day, never. Christine said, I wonder... Why you went to Abbey Road? It's not something I saw you doing on your own. No, I was dragged there. Uh, I just missed. Uh, he was in the chat and then he left. Alan Cheapshot, the wonderful guy, posts wonderful, wonderful old wrestling stuff. And I pre he's a historical resource for me. Let me get through these. Christine said, maybe Shirley was like, get the fuck out of here and get that nice boy's autograph for me. Andrew said, RJ, hope to see you in Queens in a week. Yes. And they still wear the hats. Great. I will see you on the look. I'll meet you outside of London Lenny's. Just naming. Cinnamon Girl said, do a scene of B. Arthur. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I won't. I refuse. Uh, getting picked up in a bar by a pervert. That would be a gentleman, not a pervert. And you said, Massapequa, South Shore. That was your first mistake. I didn't know. I took a risk. Big Ben said, good morning, RJ. Hope you're well. You are handsome. Hope you are as well as you are handsome, my friend. I guess. Miss you too. Henderson said, that's the show. Yes, thanks, RJ. And yes, I fused the count of Vincent Price. Happy to iron that out for you. Um, Andrew said, Frank's doing his thing, man. Sammy Davis Jr., really another person that people need to read and research. And if you thought that guy just showed up in tap dance, I also, and I'm, it's one of my favorite bad videos. And it was Labor Day. So there's two videos. Sammy Davis Jr. did a rendition of uh, Music of the Night from Phantom of the Opera on the Jerry Lewis telethon. And it is such a piece of shit. It is so unnecessary. I'm the Phantom. Like, it's that bad. And then he also did, from his sh variety show, Sammy and Company, absolutely, by far, the worst Beatles medley I've ever heard in my fucking life. It is just... And I, I'm not even that personal about the Beatles, like fucking whatever. There's been plenty of bad, but this is like, just like the sacrilegious epitome of like what not to do with those songs. Like, yes, I found it insulting. Uh, KP said, I love Matt Taven. Well, good for you. Leo said, the bakery I worked at used to supply bread and pastries to Abbey Road. I'd like a croissant. There was a lot of that going on. Saeed said, still shocked that RVD kissed D.B. Yossi's foot for $100 back in the day. I'm happy that people are learning about Rob Van Dam and the history of weed. Go watch the Hey W now. Leo has a 60-second scene request. Eugene Levy saying that I suck after your Shits, Shits Creek audition. 
All right, here we go. Ah, no, that's very interesting. You said your name was uh, right, right, and you're a, you're a professional professional wrestler. Okay, yeah. Well, th well, that's for sure. It's certainly, certainly, that your professionalism would be in the the wrestling department. Did you did you read the script at all before uh, doing the? Uh, okay, no, no, no. It's just it. it it came off very raw. Let me put it that way. It was very, uh, it was very raw. It was very uh, uh, unusual, and we were hoping for something different, in the sense that what you did was here, and and something good, a good version of it is here, and we're we were really we were hoping you would cover the spread, I guess, uh, uh, in between. No, it was very, uh, I, I thought it was, um, we won't call you. And scene. That was Eugene Levy telling me I was shit. That was therapeutic for me, so thank you. Pogo said, I really miss all those variety shows that had singers and dancers, all kind of cabaret type acts. I will remind you again, it's coming up, I don't know when, probably weeks and weeks from now. But I'm excited about it. I'm doing another episode of TV Guidance Counselor. Uh, with Ken Reed, and we talk about the variety shows. And, you know, I was actually listening to a thing about the variety shows, and, you know, musicians were really inaccessible back in the day. Like, for all the Beatles did, they didn't perform on TV that much. So you did have to settle for shit like Sammy Davis Jr. doing a Beatles medley. Like, every variety show did a Beatles medley because... Everyone liked those songs on the radio, and then you couldn't get these bands. It was just logistically impossible. They, they, Beatles didn't do variety shows. And then, you know, with something like MTV was now, oh, we have access to all these musicians. And I feel like that kind of killed the variety show. You know what I mean? There was no need to have popular music filtered through Sonny and Cher when you can just get them now. Uh, Red Dog said the Beatles are overrated, especially John and Ringo. I don't think they're overrated. I think they're adequately rated for the body work, for all the song. You go, you that's like, you know, I compare myself to the Beatles and I go, wow, 69 episodes. And you go, wow, all these songs. Um, then you go, okay, fair. And even it's one of those things where it's like, even if you don't like Hulk Hogan, you got to be like, oh, I like he was at the top, you know, at a very high level for a decent amount of time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Same thing with Steve Austin. Not the I don't know, you know, whatever. It, I feel like even beyond people's personal taste and opinion, you'd have to go, oh, OK. Um, Mia said, we need you on the Hunkamania comedy show one day. Gee, it would have been great if fucking StarCast didn't put us head to head to split the dwindling small audience that is interested in both comedy and comedy about wrestling. Jesus. What is this Conrad guy doing? Uh, Sean said, Red Dog, you were misevaluating Ringo. Leo said, did you go to Hulk Hogan's Pasta Mania? No, but I, th I think I met someone who did once. I can't remember who it was, but I definitely remember having this. Leo said, or the WCW Barn Grill. No, but I went to WWF New York, and I got a bottomless glass, and I saw Al Snow do commentary. Thurman said, or actually, do wrestlers wear thongs because it chops their farts in half? Yes, Thurman. This is a stupid fucking question. Obviously, yes. Well, so far, I think that's been the show. Mm. RJ Chibi stickers, you can get them at shopaw.com along with Hey Shirts, a Hey Mug, and the Wrestle Inn shirt, which is selling like hotcakes at a farmer's market. And I will say it again. Go watch the latest Hey W with Rob Van Dam. Go like it. Go share it. Go comment. Go just tell everybody about it. It is a wonderful time. Tell him you love him. Tell Tony Khan, I'm doing a good job. I don't know if he's seen a, a single frame, even the episode he was on. So, and then other than that, I'll be around. You'll see me variety places, Dynamite, Cincinnati, Collision, State College, Pennsylvania. It's going to be a time. Let's get a final look at these. Thank you all for joining me. Happy belated birthday to David.
the orange is is happening. And and like a citrus, I'm I'm colorful yet acidic. Until next time, Godspeed.